For many, the Home Pony is a week-long festival that brings together riders, families and friends. For those that compete, it's about camaraderie and teamwork. It's all about supporting each other, it's about sportsmanship, it's about encouraging their you know, comrades, their friends, their, the people they're up against. It's more about families and bringing that together than it is just the sport, I think. It welcomes you to a team event and shows what it's like being a team and it helps you at the Europeans, um, helps with pressure and stuff. It feels a lot nicer around the team because you've got all support around and it's quite fun just having fun and going around and just being with the team and friends, it's nice. I think it's great for them um, to start when they're, they're small and work up and to work in the, the, the team section so that they actually work as a team as opposed to just an individual rider. They're very good and they're very supportive of each other and you know, they hate, the kids kill themselves if they make a mistake but they equally, none of, you never hear them saying oh I would have won if you had done better, they don't say that, that doesn't come into it. But they're very good, they always work with each other and support each other. The 148 class and the last chance for Scotland and Wales to take their first gold. The Welsh started well with Joshua Bridge and Ultrador going clear, but it was a somewhat false dawn as it turned out to be the only clear round for the team, who after dropping their worst scores finished on a total of 28 points for fourth place. So what about Scotland? Jodie Weir and Elsa Black produced the team's only two clear rounds. Otherwise, it was four faults across the board, leaving Scotland with a total score of 16. Once again, it seemed that it was going to be England and Ireland competing for top spot. Carrying forward four faults from round one, England's second round started well, with Charlotte East's Sequoia True Legacy going clear. Her teammate, Leah McCready on Maximus Gladiator, then produced clear round number two. Ireland came into their second round with a clean sheet and then continued to follow the same pattern as England with their first two riders producing clear rounds. Kira Kennedy on Trefillin Talisman and Sophie Mills on Adja. England's Devon Armstrong unfortunately had the first fence down, perhaps feeling the pressure, but she settled down and aside from that produced a solid performance for the rest of the round. However, it meant a good ride from Ireland's third rider, Sophie Slattery, would be enough for the Irish to win the class. Sophie, riding Kill Torma Gray, didn't let her team down. A terrific clear gave Ireland their first gold of the day. So, James Broom once again handing out the medals. Ireland on top of the podium with England taking silver and Scotland the bronze. So, how did the medal table look after the three classes? England on top with two golds, Wales currently sitting at the bottom of the table. Perhaps their luck would change with the on-foot jumping. Now this is one of the highlights of the day. Kind of like a human assault course, but they're quite high, those fences. And some great support, as you can see. No, 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 training leg. Now you see those battens there, it is a relay, so it's all about teamwork as well. That's an interesting technique, but he got over it. No, <laughs> he's having trouble. That's better, that's how you do it. This is top quality on foot jumping. With a score of 1 minute 43, way up! Mid-September and the Home Pony Roadshow moved north to Scotland. Not far from Glasgow is the Ingleston Country Club. For the mums and dads, it's like a five-star hotel. For the riders, it's back to the job in hand. Four days of competition and the prospect of a bucking Bronco event to round it all off. With the night starting to draw in, it was time to head indoors to Ingleston's magnificent indoor arena. It's the first time I've ever been to Ingleson, but um, various people have been before and they've all told me how lovely it is. And I mean, you can't fault it. It's absolutely lovely. Ahead of them all, four days of competition. For many, the Scottish home pony team classes would be the highlight of the week. 
especially for the 48 riders selected to represent their home nations. It's a decent testing course. Fair, it's not small, but it's not tricky and um, it's not overly massive. They can't go in there and just sit and passenger. They, you watch these children and they're riding. They'll get away with one mistake in every few fences because they're little, but the ponies won't take more than one mistake at a time. And then the pony says no thanks. Well, as always, each team class begins with a Nations Cup style parade and some new names making it into the teams. For Scotland, Sandy McLean and Vicky Selby join Annalise Aitkin and Nicole Lockhead. For Wales, Arena Abramovich, Halle Lunn and Robert Murphy joined Georgia Taylor Jones. And with a completely new lineup for Ireland and three changes in the England team, all bets were off that it would once again be a clean sweep for the English and Irish contingents. Scotland got the 128 class underway with Vicky Selby riding Queen of Castle Hill, but it didn't quite go to plan. What sort of happened is that I came over the jump and my leg went too far back and the stirrup came out. And then I totally lost it, so I tried to carry on my hardest, but I just tried, so that's all I can do. Absolutely, you can't do more than that. Well done, Vicky, for trying. And from Team Scotland to Team Wales, they were going to find themselves in a head-to-head -head with Ireland. Robert Murphy and Mintfield Starlight produced two superb rounds for Wales. Even with the two clears, the Wales team still picked up a total of 20. Ireland, having only carried four faults through into round two, must have felt it was beatable. In the end, though, Ireland picked up another 12 faults, also finishing on 20, to go into a jump-off with the Welsh. That left England, who avoided the jump-off by the narrowest of margins. Daisy Deakin went clear in round one and picked up four in the second. Tara Burt picked up four faults and then went clear in the second. Chloe McHattie had four faults in both rounds. And finally, Connie ward Alden went double clear. It all required some frantic calculations from the England HQ before confirmation that England had indeed won the gold. Connie had to jump a clear round in that last round for us to win, which we didn't tell her because we thought it might just put a little bit too much pressure on, but she rode super. That's what it's all about, clear rounds win medals, so yeah, very good. Clear rounds definitely win medals, and that's exactly what was required in the jump off for silver position. Jason Foley was the first Irish rider to go clear, swiftly followed by teammates Kerry Kerr and Abby Sweetnam. Wales only narrowly missed out with clears from the superb Robert Murphy and Georgia Taylor Jones, but faults from both Arena Abramovich and Hallie Lunn gave Ireland the silver. <laughs> Terrific stuff, though, and another gold goes England's way. The Home Pony Series demonstrates the huge amount of work that goes on not just by the riders, but by the mentors, coaches and parents, all part of the development of young talent to produce international riders for the future. How important do you think these Home Pony shows are as a building block for the young riders to come through to the senior ranks? I think that they are the most wonderful, wonderful thing. I mean, this is the start of the Pony Europeans, the under-18s, the under-23s, and even going as far as the Olympic Games. It, this is all team building, and it gives them the experience and to know what it's like to pull together. I think, I think they're absolutely wonderful, wonderful shows. We're sort of trying to educate the children and the parents in the structure of how we go about picking teams. They have been jumping um, opens, the, the main 12-2 opens um, and been watched probably since about Easter time for this. Um, we watch the point system in Scotland and how they do there and they're watched at every event and then they had to jump yesterday and still prove their worth to be in a team and we're picked on how they went yesterday. The parents play a huge part in it, um, you know, from getting ready at home, leaving on time, planning where you're going, entry fees. I have a great bunch of parents. They're all very good, very supportive. Um, I try, if I'm dropping somebody, I try to have a reason why. And if, if the children and parents can see why they're not on, nobody minds. And then they come back and support the others. Unfortunately, you can't put them all on every day. 
You've got to have the ponies uh, right, the riders right, you know, they've got to be trained properly. Um, we have to have all the tack clean, you know, it's, there's a lot involved. We travel together, they get up in the morning, this morning at half a six, my two older girls were up feeding, doing the stables, you know, they do everything work-wise, the girls or the children. If they don't do the work, I don't go to the show. Well, you have to retire from your work for a start. <laughs> I've been around a long time and I'm back again doing the circle again. But I'm the driver, the groom, you name it, I do it. So how did the 138 riders get on? The Irish started off in round one in normal fashion with another strong performance. Clear rounds came from James Houston on Anagmore Boomerang and Holly Sweetnam on La Passion. Clearly giving their supporters plenty to shout about. Rory Clark picked up four faults, as did Nicholas Farr, riding Dunin's Kulala Boy. Unfortunately, the team picked up 12 more faults in round two, which on any other day could have been enough for a podium finish if it hadn't been for the excellent performances from the other three nations. The Welsh finished on just eight faults, while the English, with double clears from Emma Shingles and Lucy Carver, finished on four. That just left Scotland, who finished on a perfect zero. Double clears from Graham Babes and Rory Aird, helping the team to their first 2012 home pony goal. So Rory, I hear you were on the winning team in Scotland. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really good. Uh, me and Graham were double clear. Uh, the first round we finished on a clear total through the whole thing. We were the only team to do that, so we won it outright. Um, yeah, it was really good. We went in. I was first to go of everybody, so went in and I was clear. I think one of us had four faults, but the rest of us went clear, so basically the whole round we, <laughs> we were on top, so it was big and we had to jump, but we, we were very good at clear rounds, so we knew what we were doing. And do you enjoy riding on a team? How do you handle the pressure? Yeah, I, I love riding on a team, because at least you know that if you make a mistake, there's other folk there to help you, you know, and Barney's a really good team pony, so I'm usually first in out of everybody, and I'm quite good at getting the good round to get everybody going, you know. So, well done to Scotland. Rory Ed, Graham Babes, Emma Crawford and Sandy McLean. And they obviously came prepared with a victory celebration. Loving the headgear, chaps. Back after the break. See you in a moment. 